Hey guys, Molson here. So shortly after finishing my first event, I decided to continue on, but our school wasn't much of a chess school and we only really played that one event the whole entire year. So I decided to join a junior chess club instead, and that's when I met a lot of kids the same age as me, as well as some who were much younger, but much stronger than me at the time. We'd meet up once a week for a few hours at a time, and I quickly learned that if I was to get any better, I needed much better openings than what I currently had, which were the things you'd always be taught at a beginner level, which were like the fried liver and other things against 1e4e5. But it didn't really seem exciting to me, and it didn't really spark my interest. But there was one particular opening which really did um, catch my eye. So do you want to try and guess what that opening was? The first ever one I learned which has stuck with me ever since? Well, I'll give you a hint. I looked through a lot of poor Morphe games at the time. So for those of you who correctly guessed The King's Gambit, well done. It was the first opening I ever learned and I learned it from this book by Neil MacDonald. I think I was gifted or I got the book after developing an interest in the line. The second book I ever read was one by Josh Waitzkin and it was called Attacking Chess. So these two books would go on to basically shape my entire playing style at least as, in, um, at least as a junior. So overall I found the opening extremely challenging to learn because I had to break a lot of chess principles before I'd even mastered them. But I continued on and after several months I started to see much better results. And here see a photo at me at one of my first ever events where I had my first major success alongside another very talented junior from the club. So the King's Gambit starts here after 2f4. White offers a sacrifice pawn in exchange for open lines and a potential attack. So there was one kid who was a few years younger than me and he was much better than me at the time when I first started. He would always play this one variation so he'd always take it and after knight f3 he'd play bishop to e7 which was the Cunningham defense going for bishop h4 check and white has to forego castling. So I played a lot of games in this particular variation but of course you have to excuse that I don't remember them because they were played in a club event setting and a lot of them were fast time controls and we weren't taking any notations. So I do vaguely remember I played a lot of bishop c4s and after bishop h4 check, instead of trying to show you the games which were probably incomplete from memory, uh, I'm going to show you one of the games I probably first looked at from the book instead. So the game I'm going to show you here went king to f1, but later on I actually played a lot of games with the move pawn to g3 here. The idea being black takes, and then instead of taking back or taking the bishop, the idea for white here is actually to just castle, and I thought this was a very very fun variation to play at the time, since black would almost often just take here on h2, and then white can play the move king to h1 and use the pawn on h2 as sort of a shield for our own king. And it, it looks a bit strange because we have absolutely no pawn cover around our king, but the pawn on h2 is our shield. This variation is not considered the best anymore because black can play the move pawn to d5 here, and after bishop takes he can play the move knight to f6, and this is meant to be perfectly okay for black followed by ideas of bishop to h3. But of course as a junior not many players would play the move pawn to d5 and they'd run into all sorts of problems after bishop takes f7 check threats and knight h6 would be met a lot by the move pawn to d4 which would get you some quick wins sometimes after bishop takes h6 and some quick bishop takes f7 sacrifices. But going back to the game, white played the move king to f1, d5, bishop takes, knight f6, bishop back to b3, the bishop went to g4, pawn goes to d3, and now black castles, queen to d2, so white wants to unpin and also wants to take the pawn on f4 at the same time we're attacking the bishop here. Black played the move knight to h5, knight c3, knight c6, 
And now white goes for knight takes h4, taking the bishop pair, queen takes. So if we're trying to get rid of the pressure, then exchanging one of the bishop pairs makes a lot of sense here for white, because once he wins the pawn on f4, he's going to have the two bishops and a slightly better endgame. So he offers the queen trade with queen to f2. This also incidentally stops knight to g3, because knight to g3 is met by king to g1. So queen takes, king takes, knight d4 is played to go after the light squared bishop. And here Joe Gallagher just continued to move knight to d5. Knight takes b3, pawn takes, g5 was played. But this is particularly weakening because now all the pawns will be attacked on the king side. So we can open things up with the move pawn to g3. Pawn to c6 was played check, king to h8, g takes f4, f5, and here white played the move pawn to h3, and the bishop is trapped, it doesn't have any squares to go to, black took, white took on g4, takes on f4, and white continued just knight f5, winning a clear piece, and black just resigned here. So I can definitely recommend joining a junior chess club, especially when you're first starting out, because I felt like it really helped my early chess development. As for opening choice, probably I chose one with quite a steep learning curve, but as long as you enjoy what you're playing at the end of the day, you're going to put in more time into learning it, and you're going to improve overall. So that's my tips. I hope you enjoyed this video, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.